I will now pour the tea. <laughs> Liz is <laughs> Liz is gonna pour some tea. Liz, what kind of tea is it? Can you can I have the microphone, please? Thank you. It's Moroccan mint. A mixture of green and mint tea, served best with a little bit of honey. Oh, it didn't even it didn't even register. That. I mean, the sound waves are so low. I'm actually <laughs> gonna just turn the microphone up. I think. I don't feel like we're gonna talk that loud, so that's you probably fine. The phone there. It's what? Unprofessional. Uh, it's unprofessional to have your phone in the shot. Sorry. You tuck it in. Tuck it in. Oh, I could tuck it in the table. <laughs> We've got little secret shelves <laughs> under there. <laughs> you can't. You got to talk to the microphone, people. You got to give us the microphone when we're talking. I don't know when you guys are going to talk. Gotta anticipate our needs. Steven, How do people do? Oh, the audio is going crazy. <laughs> the audio is going crazy. Steven, we've been living together in quarantine for a year. You should know when I'm going to speak. I'm with my two two roommates Catherine Vetter hello and Elizabeth Schmidt hi I'm pleased to be here and not only do we we live in the same apartment in Brooklyn but they also played on uh my album pictures oh, I don't have the app oh <laughs> what do I do with this did you ever know that you <laughs> He said, "Talk, not oh. sing." It's my turn to say. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm back. So i They played on my album "Pictures at an Inhibition." Is that in the shot? Oh, sorry. Okay. That's pi pictures at an inhibition. I'll put it on the teapot. Where you uh, and and it's gonna be out soon. You can pre-order it, actually. Um, right now, you can do it. I'm out of breath from just going to my room. <laughs> Did you know I would have something snarky to say to that? I figured. <laughs> I figured. We've really gotten close together over quarantine. Let me see. Well, don't put it that. Don't put it like that. What do you think I meant? What do you think I meant? <laughs> I don't know. It's just that was very open for interpretation on the part of the audience. Is what well, I'm. The so I'm have to uh, use their own brains. <laughs> watch the tea. I gotta watch the tea. Best enjoyed in the mouth and not around. They can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> this is, anyways. So thank you so much for being on my show. You're welcome. <laughs> Please. <to be. laughs> this is a disaster. What a disaster. Okay. I, so we tried this before, uh, Catherine and I. I tried to interview Catherine over Zoom like the other interview she videos. too awkward. She was too awkward. Case in point. Case in point, as Liz Case says. Case in point. And it was, so weir it was very awkward and very formal, weirdly formal. Yeah. So, and the audio was kind of weird, so it didn't really work out. So we're doing it this time with her and Liz in kind of a different format. Uh, which is very different. It's a very different format than what I'm used to. It is different. I have no reference, so uh, I'm pretty comfortable here tonight. Thank you. Liz is having a good time. So I didn't, I didn't know exactly what we would, we could talk about today. Um, so I found some questions online of good questions to ask people. Um, uh, particularly, I think it was like, particularly on like dates. But I thought it, I thought some of the questions could, could work for our for our purposes. I'm just realizing I'm never going to be able to drink tea, because my hands are going to be full of things. Yeah. But that's fine. That'd be nice. Okay. One of one of these days, I'll let you know. I'll give you a signal. Maybe we'll talk, Maybe we'll talk sometimes. Yeah, I'll hand the microphone over for a little bit while I want some tea. That'd be <laughs> great. <laughs> okay, great. Um, here's the first question. If I ask you what you do for a living, will I be too curious for you? What? If I if I <laughs> if I ask you what you do for a living, will I be too curious for you? 
Do you mean like will I be offended if you ask me? Yeah, yeah. I don't understand the question. What What do you do for li- What do you do for a living? I am a musician. I play clarinet and I teach. I teach all ages from literally zero years old to 70. Um, I teach clarinet and I teach general music. And I also play in chamber groups. One is called Sputterbox and the other is called Owasi Trio. And that's mainly what I do for a living. Cool. Um, that's good. That's good to know. That's good to hear. Um, <laughs> cheers, as Liz said. Um, Liz, what do you, ha, same uh, same question for you for you? Thanks. I'll take that. You know, I suppose it would be a slight imposition if someone asked me what I did for a living on a date. Do you, are you asking how much money I make? Like, do you want me to support you? Is that why you're asking? No, no, no. I'm offended. No. Well, I'll answer the question anyway. I too am a musician. I play the horn in lots of different ways. Um, Currently, I also work for an orchestra and I play in some groups. This, uh, during COVID, it's been pretty nice to play outside with my groups, uh, my brass quintet project egalitarian. We've been doing some recording and some playing in Prospect Park, which brings me much joy. Um, I also play in a brass trio called Three Leaf Brass with two of my dear friends. And I have been recently, I joined a band called Free River, which is kind of hard to explain. It's like a folk classical music hybrid group based out of Woodstock, New York, with some really great people I met um, fairly recently. And we are starting to play together again for the summer, and we'll be playing around the Hudson River. The band is based, the Free River is is based on a love of the Hudson River, which if you've talked to me ever, you know I in fact love the Hudson River. It's just a matter of time before our apartment is filled with posters of the river. You don't need to, I'll just do it. You don't need to consent to that. Do you, there's plenty of wall space. I'm I'm more of an East River fan myself, but I just like it better. What can I say? I don't, I don't know. I'm I'm so worried about the audio. I'm just gonna we're gonna pause. I I think I'm just talking louder than you guys, <laughs> uh, and so yeah. And then crank it up. Okay. I think. All right. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hi. We're back. We just we were just checking. <laughs> Maybe we should have just looked We were just ch- <laughs> Every time I go <laughs> I keep going ch and into the microphone. So I can't I can't just I just can't talk too close. That's all it is. Come down to our volume. Okay. All right. Come down to our level. All right, here we are. Here we are. We're all talking in kind of the same same way. Wow, I'm really actually Never matching like kind that. of where your voices are that's yeah. crazy that's no it's fine i like I no <laughs> okay. no i'll just talk like this that's fine <laughs> i have another question for both of you whose resemblance do you bear my father's that makes sense yeah. anyone uh, it's my turn to answer now <laughs> my grandmother's so much so that there are pictures of her at roughly my age, and it really looks like it's me. Wow. Yeah, except she was 4'11", and I'm 5'8". Wow. One major difference. That's a big one. Wow. Yeah. That's a big one. one time someone thought I looked like Sarah Sharonin, and I thought that was very nice of them. Wow. I also look pretty similar to my older brother, um, so much so that in high school people thought we were twins, but we are two years apart. And I look like my father. So that all genetically makes sense. This voice makes me uncomfortable. I'm sorry. This is just this is just the tone of voice I have to use for the audio. Just to match. I don't think I can. I don't think I can. Look at it. Look at the waves. Look at the waves go big. Oh. Okay. 
Um, Want to go somewhere quiet? This is quiet. That's a question on that thing? That was a question on this. I'm just looking at... I would it's leave like, the date immediately. I would leave the date Are you kidding me? You're going to murder me. Yeah, no, no, no. Red flag. They didn't like... Red flag. Red flag. I agreed. She said it I don't know if they could hear you. I don't know. I don't know what's picking up and what's not. Uh, they don't like it. We're okay. We're okay. Okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> no, no. I'm not editing this. No, I don't think so. I think I, it's, all fun. it's been fine so far. Yeah, something like that. Um, that's true. That's true. That. I, I'm, I feel like I'm only <laughs> responding and they have no idea. <laughs> okay, so I'm here to tell you about the first time that the three of us collaborated together mm-hmm. before this album was when we decided to cover Blackbird by the Beatles on Instagram Live towards the beginning-ish of quarantine. Unsure, time is... It was... Was it December? <laughs> We were here together during November. quarantine. It was, it was at some point during quarantine. Feels like a really long time ago. Don't you agree? It does. Yeah. Can we all agree on that? We can agree. It feels like it's been a while. Yeah. Anyway, that was also my guitar debut. Yes. David was playing mandolin and Catherine was playing the clarinet. And at that moment, we decided this is nice. We should do more of this. And then David afforded us a wonderful opportunity to do that on his album. Glad you could be a part of it, Liz. And also Catherine. Thank you. Yeah, I was afraid of the repercussions (laughs) if I didn't say that. You could feel it. Do you want to know a secret? Not when you say it like that. So you you don't want to know a secret? I want to know a secret. I want to know a secret. You also said I didn't, couldn't swear on this, so I'm assuming it's a secret that you were okay. <laughs> well, no, I don't. That's the question. I don't have an... Well, I've accepted your request. You must tell me a secret. Well, I, didn't, I don't have a secret. It just says, do you want to know a secret? Well, if you ask us if we want to know a secret, you should have a secret ready. I'm just asking questions. I don't know what... Uh, I just looked up questions to ask. Who's telling us a secret? I don't know. I'm, I don't... Do you have a secret? I don't want to. I, I. It's too much pressure. Too much pressure. No. No secrets. I have plenty. They wouldn't be secrets if I told them. Well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that one didn't go well. I don't think. These are odd questions. Um. I know the answer to this one. Oh, I closed the questions. <laughs> Okay. This question goes to Catherine. Okay. Maybe and maybe Liz as well. I don't know. How good are you as a spy? Oh, oh! I don't think I should reveal. I don't think I should reveal my secret. Just like just how good you are as a spy. Yeah, like like the side of TikTok that was saying that like twenty something women should be like the contact tracers at the beginning of the pandemic. That's the side I'm on. Wow. That's yeah. pretty that's pretty hardcore then. Yeah. But I can't give away my secrets. Can't, can't give away your what? <laughs> I can't give away my secrets. She can't give away her secrets. No. Liz? Well, David. I I feel like with every spy, it's important to have a thirst for knowledge. And certainly I have that. So I'd like to think I would make a good spy. I also like to get along with people, and I feel like that's important in a spy career to be able to infiltrate any social circle. I, maybe I'll consider a career change from musician to spy. Or maybe I've already done it. You never know. <laughs> One thing I learned about being about being a spy from from some spy some spies who made videos on YouTube. From the, what I learned about spies from spy kids is that you gotta you gotta be able to blend in. You gotta be very nondescript. 
you got to be kind of just a face in the crowd. And I, I feel like maybe we're too interesting to be like actual good spies. We all have brown hair. We do all have brown hair. Pretty forgettable. I think that sometimes if you stick out so much, you are unsuspected as a spy. Mm. Like there's no way that person could be a spy because they're just so obviously like in your face. That's why I trip so much to throw people off. That makes sense. That's clever. That's clever to draw attention to yourself, which any spy wouldn't do. That makes sense. In a klutzy way. Oh, very nice, nice. Okay. Okay, that went better. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment after every question which ones went well. You have a sparkling set of dentition. Who's your dentist? Well, I mean, do you really want me to go on a rant about my dentist? Because I have one. Was that supposed to be a flirt? Like, you have a sparkling set of dentition? Yeah, I mean, you have... Who would say that? I mean, Is like, that a word for teeth? Again, red flag. I don't know. It's a, It was in the question. I don't... Some <laughs> internet? <Yeah. laughs> um... Is it, a, is it a safe for work rant about your dentist? I mean... Okay, so... Um, I'll find something else. I mean, I mean, I recently was at the dentist. That's true. That's true. I have spent a good amount of time at the dentist lately. Um, but most recently when I got my teeth cleaned, my dental hygienist told me that I have good oral care. Which made me feel really good. You know? Yeah. That's like one of those things where you just assume you don't have good oral care. Except for the people who do have oral care and know it. And you, those people are... You that you that know that they know it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be not one of those people. But also, I want my hygienist to always tell me that I have good oral care. Because it made me feel like a million bucks. And then I ate a bagel. And probably got bagels stuck in my teeth. <laughs> no, That's all right. <laughs> okay, here's here's what I will say about my dentist. I picked this dentist because um, this dentist was attractive, and I then I was fine with the dentist. It was fine. I got my teeth cleaned, and then the last time I was at the dentist, I feel like they tried to overcharge me and sort of tell me I needed things that I didn't mm -hmm. and so now I think I'm going to change the criteria in which I choose my next dentist so you feel that maybe attractiveness isn't the top priority when it comes to your oral care well obviously it's health insurance first because you live in America and then second is attractiveness Okay. I mean, you have to have a reason to look forward to going to the dentist. Isn't isn't clean dentition its own reward? I mean, yes, but sometimes it's painful. I mean, that's true. I have some comments about dental insurance and the American healthcare system. Um, I will say that I learned that even if you don't have dental insurance, that... It's actually sometimes less expensive to go pay and get your teeth cleaned than it is to use dental insurance for dental procedures because they are only covered proportionally. Yeah. It, they're only a proportion. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that's I learned that the hard way. Um, so a lesson to all you viewers. Get your teeth cleaned. If you have $99 or so, <laughs> just do it. It's worth it. And your teeth feel nice. I think that's a good message to everyone watching at home. Yeah. Um, care about your teeth. Yeah, show your clean dentition there. Yeah, that's good. That's nice. <laughs> and if you, yeah, if you're able, um, by all means, keep keep uh, keep a close eye on those on those puppies. Especially if you play clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you play clarinet. Um. Uh, Liz, where can I get eyes like yours? Oh, well, hopefully not 
from my own head. <laughs> I will say I have a nice story about my eye color. They are blue. Um, and my whole family, as, as in my siblings, and I all have the same exact eye color. And my dad has the same eyes. And when my brother was born, I held him like immediately after he was born and he had his eyes open and he miraculously wasn't wailing um and he looked at me and he had this exact same eyes as me and that was a really nice moment so that's the story about my eyes so please don't take them i need them to see the music so i could get them from your brother then please don't harm my <laughs> please don't harm the angels <laughs> It was a hypothetical question. Don't worry. I'm worried. I'm worried. Catherine, will you enact your spot? Okay. Okay, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine, I think I got a solution. Yeah. If you ever want to say anything, just like give me a tap on the shoulder. Just give me like, just go. And then I'll go, oh, Catherine wants to but talk. Then you won't get like the witty timing. Yeah, I don't. But do you like saying everything twice? Nope. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, between veal and beef, which will you struggle for? Neither. But it's uh, between veal and beef. Struggle? <laughs> yeah, which? Are we hunting? <laughs> what? Who wrote these questions? <laughs> Say that again, Liz. I would like to know the author of this site that you're looking at. It's definitely a man. Yeah. It. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I just wrote down the best questions. And you picked that one. I mean, which veal? Okay. Between the. What's your answer to the question? I don't really like either of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big cow no, guy. No. Liz. Veal is inhumane, mm. and just the meat industry is also inhumane and so unless you can source your meat from a farm that is ethical then neither yeah so it's a it's a big solid neither from from this couch and chair next to the couch save the cows save the <laughs> save the cows <laughs> <laughs> hmm Just looking at the questions here. Um, okay. <laughs> Liz is saying two bad options of things. Can I keep staring at you? If someone said that to me, I would walk out. <laughs> I mean, same. Can you imagine? Literally, let's role play it right now, okay? Oh, God. Okay. Who so, <laughs> So you're the person I'm on the date with. Okay. We're sitting, we're sitting, you're just also here, you're you know, here. you're here, it's all right. <laughs> yep. So I've got my drink, I'm looking at you okay. for too long and there's a silence, right? Okay. And I just say, can I just stare at you? I have to go. Yes. <laughs> the question is, can I keep staring at you? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, let's yeah. Let me, let's reset, reset, reset. <clears throat> Actually, let me, David. You be the you be the subject now. You you see how it feels. Oh, oh no. I'll just be here. Can I just keep staring at you? I'm not a I'm not a fan. Exactly. Oh look, my sweater ripped. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess don't ask that question to people. That one doesn't work so well. <laughs> I didn't like that either. <laughs> no, okay. I'll avoid that question. There's another one about staring, but I won't ask that one, I guess. Um, what's the worst joke you've ever had? What did one hot dog say to the other? I don't know. What did one hot dog say to the other? Hi, Frank. 
Do I have to? No, I was just, you were laughing. <laughs> I wasn't. So I just wanted to get some laughter in there in the audio. You can put the laugh track. I'll just have Liz laugh again. Okay. Ah, you know, it's the confidence for me. You know, you say that with such confidence. It's like, hi, Frank. Thank you. And there's just two hot dogs. You know, I've heard worse. Thank you. I like your assessment of my joke. I think the worst joke, it's a classic, but I think definitely the worst joke is knock knock. Um, Who's there? Banana. Banana. banana who? Knock knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana. Knock knock. I don't like. Banana. Don't like where this is going. <laughs> Who's there? Orange. Orange who? <laughs> Orange, you glad I didn't say banana? Like, I, I everybody's disappointed. <laughs> yeah. I yelled orange and it clipped the audio. Yeah. <laughs> this audio is going to be a tire fire. We are so oh, my sorry goodness. You have to adjust the volume. <laughs> 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 just to keep it. Ha ha ha. It's a whole thing. Thank you for those jokes. That was good. That was very nice. <clears throat> um,. This, this, I, I think this question has something to do about your reliability. Um, I think. Does your twelve noon sharp mean one p.m.? <laughs> okay, so first of all, these are very rude questions to ask on a date, and second of all, if a like job interview was asking me this, I'd be like, bye. Um, it depends on what it is and how much I want to be there mm. or how long it takes me to leave the house that day or if I have to leave the house, especially now, it takes forever to leave the house. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I'm in agreement. It really depends on the function. Like if I need to be somewhere at 12 p.m. sharp, of course. first of all, who's using the word sharp at me? That's like it's overkill. It's 12 yeah. p.m. If you tell me that I must be there at 12 p.m., I will be there at 12 p.m. If it's show up around 12, you're getting 1 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Yeah, usually if it's any time in the morning and I have the option to be mm -hmm. in my bed, yeah. I will be in my bed as long as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. when, it, when was the last time someone said, like, sharp at the end of a time with us? Like... Not, not since I've been a, an adult, I don't think. I guess it's not a thing you tell adult people. I don't think so. I haven't heard it in a while. Yeah. That's a real thinker. That's a real thinker for you out there. Comment below when the last, <clears throat> last time someone said sharp in that context to you. Yeah, everyone who says that is going to be like offended now. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry, everybody. B please get pictures and inhibition um, for pre-order. Say 12 p.m. sharp. <laughs> we still like you. We still, we still like you, no matter what you say or how you time things. And it's coming out on April 30th. I don't know if I mentioned that. April 30th, which is coming up. That's I'm going to be posting this very soon. So, um, great. Uh, who uh, who are the top five people in your life? <laughs> Do I have to? to I have this? to rank people. Is this, top. Is, this, is this my space? <laughs> this is a. I, I just. It's an interesting question. This is, this is no. Not appropriate for a date, I'd say. Yeah. For a date, that's a yeah. For a date, that's an appropriate that's question. I'm hearing. Okay. But maybe not for a recorded interview. That's a great question for a date because if a man says his mom you gotta run oh okay as number one no mm. if my mom is watching um <laughs> love you thanks for watching you're very supportive um would you like to answer the top five people in your life Liz? No. she doesn't want to all right i was gonna hand the microphone over that would have been a waste of time okay that's fair How's this? Okay, I'm not even going to ask you this question. I don't think you're going to like it. But I'll. <laughs> <laughs> Have we liked any of the questions? The teeth. <laughs> Which one was this? Oh, sure. the teeth one, the dentition one. We liked that. But okay, so I'll ask this as as a line, as a a pickup line. Oh, okay. How do we feel about this Probably one? Bad. 
your atoms like my atoms. What great chemistry? Is that a question? Oh, it has a, it had a, yeah, yeah, yeah. it had a question mark at the end, so I assume it's a question. You have to say it like, what great chemistry? Like you have to say it like a question maybe. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like w what my reaction would be. Yeah. Yes. If, if someone said that on a date, and I think it would be exactly that. Just, <laughs> just a blank stare <laughs> and a worried gaze. Like, yeah, I'd be concerned, I think. Yeah. That's not a full sentence. Yeah. It was, I didn't know how it worked, as, why it had a question mark at the end. Yeah. You know, so like, I think we have great chemistry it's, on an atomic level. I don't know. It's still not good either way you do it. It's not, it's not. It's not good. I feel like there's got to be a better one in there about our cells. Mm. You know, like everybody's got protons and neutrons and when they say opposites attract, even on a cellular level, we're compatible. I'll work on it. Yeah, workshop. Yeah. It's better already than that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. what um. I'm no scientist. <laughs> <laughs> This is a very, this is kind of a cultured question. Mm -hmm. Trying to see kind of how worldly you are. You'll take it. <laughs> what international brand do you prize most? <clears throat> okay, so I think there's this hard cider called Aspal that is in English. Aspal. A S P A L L. A S P only A S P A L L. You can get it here. They distribute it limitedly lim on a limited basis. Mm -hmm. um, also, PG Tips tea. It's a black tea. We have some over there. That's also from England. It's a trend, I suppose. Um, and I really like Nivea lotion, which I think is German. And they they can get it here, but it's, I think it's a German. I'm it's probably not German. But I was first introduced to it in Germany, so therefore, in my brain, it's German. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. How about you? I don't subscribe to capitalism. <laughs> well, all right then. Um, Please. Uh, I feel like those were the those were the best questions I I had. <laughs> Oh yeah, let's talk about let's let's talk about the album, shall we? Um, so you played both of you played um, on a track called "Everything Is Evergreen." I mean, there are eleven tracks. I got to keep them in, you know, kind of kind of cycle through which one it was. "Everything Is Evergreen," and it was a song. I'll just talk about the song for a bit. So. So the song, I came up with this song idea on a walk while I was walking around through our neighborhood. And we live <clears throat> on Evergreen Avenue in Brooklyn. And I was, it was early on in uh, the pandemic, <laughs> somewhere around like September or October. Um, no, it was a bit before that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so at the very beginning of the pandemic a couple months ago. Um No, it was it was it was early on I was I was thinking it was like transitioning from winter to spring. And I thought, you know, here it is, you know, changing seasons outside and we're just stuck in indoors all the time. And it seemed to me that time had frozen in some essence and that everything was evergreen, that everything was just green all the time there wasn't any any change um so i wrote a song about that and i thought it'd be it'd be nice since i live with the two of you here on evergreen avenue that i'd orchestrationally and instrumentally um come up with something for for you guys to do on it and it's uh it's a real it's a real jam i think and it turned out pretty well if any of you would like to talk about it oh okay <laughs> um <laughs> One thing I will say about the 
not recognizing the seasons changing. We were just talking the other day about how the cherry blossoms are blossoming now. And like, we didn't see them last year. Like, Mm. there are three right out front. And we didn't see them because we don't have a window that goes to out front. And I walked outside the other day and I was like, huh, I didn't know those were there. Because last year we didn't see them. So, yeah, I definitely feel that. Like, we didn't really see the change in weather last year. Also, my allergies are telling me that, too. Same. Same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, the song, though, Mm. I had a blast recording my part. Um, I played clarinet on it and got to write a little solo that I feel great about. So, excited to hear that again. Um, And then I also got to sing, which is amazing. Um, So that was really fun, too. So thank you so much for having me on the track. I, too, had a great time playing and singing on this track. Um, Yeah, I was recording it in my basement in my family's house upstate, because this was when we were not together during the pandemic. it was really hard for me to record horn at all because I stayed in the basement and the basement was the entire bottom floor of the house. Um, And any movement would get registered on the microphone. And so it was really nice to be able to record the singing because I could do it after everybody went to sleep and it was naturally very quiet in the house. The horn is a little too loud to do that um, with children sleeping and a dog upstairs so that was really fun plus playing bass lines on the horn is very fun so I appreciated that Mm -hmm. I did think it was kind of funny that when we recorded that particular track we were all three in different places (laughs) (laughs) it was kind of about how we were all here (laughs) but but it worked out it worked out it worked out things things change Um, and I should also mention that Liz played on another track on the album, uh, a bit of a Western epic of sorts called Contemporary Cowboy. And um, I believe it was one that Liz, uh, a, a song that Liz is rather fond of in my discography. And so I thought, why not give her a, a French horn solo? And so we recorded that one here, I think. Not the final take. Not the final take? I think we recorded some maybe. bits, maybe. Yeah, we, we started it here. Yeah, we started in the office when it was still your bedroom um we we changed the apartment a little bit but yeah that was one of the songs you played on a show you did at stony brook right and it's one of my favorites it's so cool the different it's like you're really in a western movie with different feels and like the way that you move into the saloon part of it i really think is so cool so when we jammed on it pre-pandemic for fun I couldn't resist pulling out the horn and playing along um, so it was really nice to do that in a more structured way especially with a horn solo and I could probably play over that hundreds of different ways of course and uh, yeah I'm pleased with how it came out though there's so many great people on that song too I'm glad that you got the whole like orchestra situation going on there it brings in so many different sounds yeah Every, every once in a while my screen goes black and I just have to check that things are still up and running. Is it clicky, clicky, click? There's that. There's that. That's going. It's still red. That's nice. Okay, great. Well, that's very nice. Lovely. Um, I don't know. How long have we been talking, do you think? No idea? 1,237. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... It's at 120. Okay, so it's 120 BPM. You can change so it that's time. twice a second. You can I, just change it. Just, okay, yeah, I'll change it to time. Let's see. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Catherine, yes. if you would you rather okay. <laughs> sleep on the roof Ooh. or sleep on the fire escape? I feel like you're asking me this because you want to sleep on the roof tonight. Um, I think I'd rather sleep on the fire escape for like privacy, like knowing for sure no one's going to come up there. Um, But the roof would be definitely a better view. 
How about you? That's a good question because I I agree that the fire escape would be more private. There's not quite as much room to like roll around and it does have the slits. So we'd have to put some cushioning on there. Um, But it's windy on the roof. Mm, But I would feel, you know, I feel pretty safe up there. Like I could roll plenty and not fall off the edge. I don't roll. I I do roll. Mm. But I just got a sleeping pad for camping. So maybe I'll try it out on the roof sometime. I think it needs to be a little warmer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For legal purposes, we don't go on our fire escape or roof. No. That's correct. We are not. We are not in violation of any of the terms of our lease. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, We only know that there's a roof because it's above us. We haven't seen it from any other angles. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we have a fire escape. Thank you know just for safety for 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 fires (laughs) for fire purposes. (laughs) For fires. Oh, the, the, thank you. That was, see, that worked. Okay. That worked pretty well. That was good. Um, yeah, I would have been. I would have been worried about tossing and turning and tossing off the roof. But you don't. You don't roll. I don't roll. You have to roll pretty far. Yeah. I guess unless you like. Okay, so you're not setting up one, on the edge. I guess you that makes sense. On the one end that has like the like little wall. You could set oh that. yeah, there's a little. There's the probably a little wall up there. Probably, I would assume. <laughs> we heard. I think I. We, I, we may have heard from the superintendent that there's a a slight wall on the thing. There's a snuggle with Jim. The hypothetical Jimi Hendrix graffiti that's on our roof. The hypothetical. There, I, I haven't seen it. Seen a picture. We saw it. We saw it from uh, from above. Yeah, from the spot. we zoomed in. <laughs> We zoomed in. That's how we. Know, that's how we know it's there. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. What's your skincare routine? I'm glad you asked. So my skincare routine. I uh, every once in a while. <laughs> every once in a while. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I get. I. I feel the need to bathe. News to us. To, sh- to shower. <laughs> she said. She said news to us is what she said. I'm just kidding. You, you've heard me shower before. I have. Yeah. Because the pipes are right by my head. <laughs> the, the pipes. I hear when everybody in the building showers. Oh golly. I just hear us. Oh, that's that's fair. That's fair. Um, so yeah, sometimes I go into the shower and um, I turn on the hot water mm-hmm. and kind of stand like under it, you know, so it's right. kind of going on my skin. And then I have uh, some shampoo, but that's hair care. You didn't ask about hair care. Uh, I, I have some body wash okay. um, and I use that, interestingly enough, to um, uh, wash my body. Um, the the um, the body parts that need washing. Like face. Oh, face! Oh, I don't do anything with the face. That's the question. When people ask you, like, what your skincare routine is, it's like your face. Oh, I thought because it, <laughs> it's like no, your audience. Skin is skin. <laughs> skin is the skin is the largest organ. That's true. So you got to be more specific when it comes to skin. I okay. could. Yeah. Okay. So what's my facial skin? <laughs> Routine yeah. is what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, the people want to know. I sometimes... Okay, here's... You want to know the biggest struggle? Yeah. <sighs> oh, my goodness. The biggest struggle. So I got this I got this soul patch here. <laughs> and when I eat my cereal in the mornings, it collects all the milk. <laughs> the milk dribbles off the spoon oh, no. and gets into my soul patch. And then it gets really crusty. It gets really crusty and just like sticks out like a point, like a pointy elf shoe. It just like sticks out of my face. Um, so the majority of my skincare routine is just washing this little bit <laughs> of my beard to make sure all the milk's gone. Have you considered eating cleaner? You say you say it like it's easy, Catherine. <laughs> you say it like I don't, I, I don't I don't spoon my milk in with your cereal. Your milk, <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't. You okay? So you're eating cereal. You eat cereal. I don't eat cereal. She doesn't eat cereal, ladies and gentlemen. 
I think we should wrap up, honestly. <laughs> I think we've been talking yeah, long enough. No. I eat cereal, and I can imagine that this would be an inconvenience. Um, I do have a question for both of you. Would you like to do facial masks together sometime? I happen to have a bunch that I recently procured. We could have a group spa day. We're on air, so you have to say yes. I would love that. I feel like I'm being proposed to at a baseball game. David, do you mind if I just stare at you for a while? <laughs> and on that note, I would like to thank my guests here this evening, Elizabeth Schmidt over there, and Catherine Vetter right next to my right. And I have been your host, David Voss, with a somewhat different spin on the interview chat video. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope if you're wearing headphones, I'm just so sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, but this has been, I don't have a name for the show. This has been our interview. And on April 30th, make sure you stay tuned. Not only, I should say, not only do we have a physical CD, you can purchase the digital album on Bandcamp and on on April 30th, it's going to be coming out on all streaming platforms. So you can stream it. You can iTunes it. I, do people still do that? No. You can stream it. Um, and so you can just, anywhere you go. TikTok is going to be on TikTok. Wow. Yeah. Can you use it as a sound? I think you'll be able to use it as a sound on TikTok. Amazing. So if you're a TikToker out there, do, uh, please. <laughs> please use my sounds. And... Uh, the end. The end. We're done.